Hey everybody, welcome to my third video on exponents. In my first video I gave you an introduction, in my second I talked about negative exponents, and in this video I want to talk about properties of exponents. Properties of exponents. And the first property I want to talk about is the product rule. And the product rule says that if you multiply two exponents with a common base, then you can simplify this by just adding the exponents. So let's go over an example and I think this will make a little bit more sense. So let's say we have x with a exponent of 2 and that's being multiplied by x with a exponent of 3. So both of these exponents have a common base of x and since the base is being multiplied with each other we can add the exponents. We have an exponent of 2 and we can add that with our other exponent of 3. So if we simplify this even further, we have our base of x and in our exponent we have 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So the only thing we have to do is add the exponents. And this rule actually really makes sense. Let me show you an illustration to show you that this actually does make sense. So we have x squared. x squared is just x multiplied by itself two times. And this is being multiplied with x cubed. And x cubed is just x multiplied by itself three times. And if we count our total number of x's, we have one, two, three, four, five x's. We have x multiplied by itself five times. So we have a five in the exponent. So I hope that illustration gives you an idea of why the product rule makes sense. So uh, let's go over another example. And this time let's use some negative exponents. Uh, let's say we have 2 with a negative 3 exponent and that is being multiplied by a 2 with a positive 5 exponent. And we still need to use the same rule as before just because we have a negative exponent it doesn't change anything. So we have a common base of 2 and since the common base is being multiplied with each other we need to add the exponents. So we have an exponent of negative 3 and we need to add that with our other exponent of positive 5. So if we simplify this even further, we have our base of 2, and in our exponent we have negative 3 plus 5. Negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. So we have 2 squared, which is equal to 4. We can't simplify this any further than that. So I think that gives you a basic idea of the product rule. Um, so now let's go over our next rule, which is the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is actually very similar to the product rule. Uh, it says that if you have two exponents with a common base, um, you can simplify them by just subtracting the exponents. So let's go over an example, and I think this will make a lot more sense. Uh, let's say we have x to the fifth, and this is being divided by x to the third. So we have a common base of x, and since it's being divided by each other, then we can subtract the exponents. So we have an exponent of 5, and we need to subtract that with our other exponent of positive 3. So if we simplify this even further, we have our base of x, and in our exponent we have 5 minus 3, which is a positive 2. x to the fifth over x cubed can be simplified as x squared. So let me show you another illustration to show you that this quotient rule actually really makes sense as well. In our numerator we had x to the fifth. Now x to the fifth is just x multiplied by itself five times. x times x times x times x. And in our denominator we had x cubed, which is just x multiplied by itself three times. x times x times x. And if we simplify this expression, notice how three of the x's cancel out and we're left with two x's in the numerator and you can multiply the denominator by one. You can say we have a one in the denominator. And in our numerator we just have x times x which is just x squared. x squared over one is just x squared. So, so I hope this illustration uh, gives you an idea of, of why this quotient rule actually makes sense. So let's go over another example. Let's say we have the number three and it's being divided by 3 with an exponent of 5. 
So anytime you see a number without an exponent, you can always assume that there is a 1 in the exponent position. So now we have our common base of 3, and it's being divided with each other, so we need to subtract the exponents. So we have our exponent of 1, and we need to subtract that with our other exponent of 5. And if we simplify this even further, we have our base of 3, and in our exponent we have 1 minus 5, which is equal to negative 4. And notice that we have a negative exponent in our final answer, which is not okay. You can't leave your final answer with a negative exponent. So if you've seen my previous video, you know that a negative exponent in the numerator is a positive exponent in the denominator. So this 3 with a negative 4 exponent, which is in the numerator right now, can be rewritten as a 3 with a positive 4 exponent in the denominator. And you can always multiply by 1, that doesn't change anything. So our 1, which is in the numerator, stays in the numerator. So our final answer is 1 over 3 to the 4th. So I think this should give you a good idea on the quotient rule. Let's go over one more example and talk about the power rule. And the power rule is used whenever you see two exponents directly on top of one another. And whenever you see two exponents right on top of one another, you can simplify them by just multiplying the exponents. Let's go over an example of this, and I think it's going to make a little bit more sense. Uh, let's say we had x squared all raised to the fourth power. So notice how we have two exponents directly on top of one another. And if we simplify this, we have our base of x. And we need to multiply the exponents. So we have our exponent of 2. We need to multiply that by our other exponent of 4. And if we simplify this even further, we have our base of x. And in our exponent, we have 2 times 4, which is equal to 8. So now we have simplified this expression as much as possible. It is equal to x to the 8th. And this power rule actually makes a lot of sense as well. Let me do another illustration to show you that this actually really does make sense. So in our original problem, we had x squared with a 4 exponent. Um, so that means we had x squared multiplied by itself four times. x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. And if we simplify this even further, x squared is just x multiplied by itself two times. So we have so we have x times x. We also have another x times x, x times x. And our last one, we have another x times x. And if we, if we count our total number of x's, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is equal to x with a 8 exponent, x multiplied by itself eight times. So I hope this gave you a better idea of why the power rule actually makes sense. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about um, some more complicated examples and go over some more properties of exponents. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you in my next one.